Welcome back, citizens, and thank you for watching. We would like to thank all of our patrons and channel members. Thank you so much for your support. If you enjoy our content, please consider hitting that like and subscribe button to help the channel grow. In today's episode, we'll be visiting the Odin system and learning about its planets, features of interest, history, and lore. And that episode starts right now. The Odin system is a large system with a single white dwarf degenerate type A star, three planets, two space stations, and a large asteroid belt within its 21 AU boundaries. Odin has three jump points. They connect Odin to the Tanga system through a medium bidirectional jump point, the Nix system through a large bidirectional jump point, and Kellogg through a large bidirectional jump point. First discovered in 2532, evidence suggests that Odin was once home to vibrant ecosystems potentially similar to Earth or Terra. That all changed when Odin's star entered the Red Giant phase. The star's expansion completely enveloped the system's first planet and quickly boiled off the biosphere of the others, killing off all native life before the star collapsed into a white dwarf. When humanity's first explorers jumped to Odin, they found a system of icy rock worlds with uniformly foreboding exteriors. With no strong terraforming candidates, the system was dedicated to industrial development. Various mining outposts and refineries were established throughout Odin to take advantage of what resources could be found. However, as easily harvested minerals dwindled, Odin's economy slowed to a crawl. As is too often the case, when businesses leave the system, criminal elements moved in to take their place. Today, the system is seen as an unsavory place on the decline. Odin most recently received a bit of positive press when it became a cause celebre of the scientific community after a group of noted archaeologists revealed that the government was allowing companies to wipe out an otherwise well-preserved fossilized record that could tell us the story of the life that became to evolve in the Odin system. While a grassroots Save the Fossils movement initially gained some traction in popular culture, interest soon faded. The Odin 1 cluster, commonly called the Coil, is possibly the most interesting area of the system. The Coil, thought to be the remnants of the system's pre-catastrophe first planet, is a seemingly unending cloud of planetary fragments, electromagnetic energy surges, and minerals. Odin 1's former moon, known as Gaini, still drifts near the remnants of its former planet and has seen some minor settlement on its lightly atmospheric surface in the form of fracking operations and gas refinement plants. Inside the coil itself, ore runs the gamut between a basic slew to heavy metals with extremely valuable caches being discovered more often than one would expect. Despite the cluster being the largest source of untapped resources in the system, it remains relatively untouched thanks to the dangers involved in any attempts to harvest them. The result of the exposed planetary core's iron-rich content coming in contact with the cast-off stellar remnants, arc charges are deadly to any ship unlucky enough to be caught in their embrace. To avoid these energy storms, most mining operations limit themselves to relatively safe pockets that temporarily appear within the shifting cloud. While Shubin Interstellar operates a station in the cluster, most mining operations have remained smaller scale. Of course, if the arc charges don't get you, the outlaws may. The labyrinth of tunnels of the coil have long served as a popular hiding spot for well-armed pirates. Recent reports indicate a new group has moved in and has been involved in dozens of hit-and-run strikes against legitimate operations. Odin 2 is believed to have been within the star's former green band and might have been ideal for human habitation before the star's collapse. Today the planet is too cold and only has what little atmosphere it has naturally gathered in the last 50,000 years. Scientists and companies looking for isolated testing facilities have established outposts on the world, but no true population lives here permanently. The planet's moon, Villi, is a different matter. Raleigh Station, a snowy base of operations erected by a now defunct weapons testing company, allows civilian contractors to bring in supplies and to ferry out hazardous materials from the facilities on Odin 2 below. 
Raleigh Station is not the most welcoming place in the galaxy, but there's enough there to keep a traveler busy. The second planet still intact in the Odin system, Odin 3. System residents are notoriously insistent that the coil still be considered the first planet, is another dead world. A few researchers have taken special note of the planet since it is believed that its surface may hold more secrets of Odin's past inhabitants than the sparse fossils that have been discovered so far. Odin 4 is a gas giant and the home to a hydrogen rendering station in geosynchronous orbit. Although there is a minimal crew to handle operations, the facilities for interacting with outsiders are fully automated. A supplier drops off unrefined hydrogen and takes on full tanks without ever encountering any of the occupants. Starship crews are actively discouraged from layovers at Odin 4. Although the station does have a limited number of poorly maintained rental apps. Space stations in Odin consist of an unnamed Aceto decommissioned communication station. This was a former mission control station, now occupied by outlaws. An Archon base, which is a space station near the coil and is led by Julian Wexler. It was attacked by the OMC on 2945 and currently doesn't appear on the star map. We won't say not to, but if you go to Odin, stay very alert. Well, that's the Odin system. Thank you for watching. More systems will be coming soon. We'll see you in the verse, and happy mining!